G'day, how you going? Today I'm uh, going to show you guys some of the stuff that I look for when I'm walking up a creek because I get a lot of people asking me, well, what do you need to look for in a creek? What are the things that you're targeting? How can you tell where the gold is in a creek? The first thing is you need to put yourself in a part of the world that is a gold bearing area. I'm in a well-known gold field. So, number one, put yourself in a creek that is surrounded by diggings and old timers workings. Now this is one such creek. There are diggings on both sides of the creek for miles. So I know there's gold on this country, so therefore there must be gold on this creek. So I'm gonna walk up this creek and I'm gonna show you some of the things I'm looking for. With this creek, there's a lot of bedrock. So if you look down here, this is all bedrock through here, but you've got a lot of big boulders, a lot of big floaters. So I'm looking for drop-offs. I'm looking for channeling points, I'm looking for tight bends, uh, cracks in the bedrock. One of the things I look for, especially with the bedrock, is I look for a downward slope. Now here's a great example here. There's a nice downward slope there, and if you look over that side there, you've got a beautiful downward slope. Okay, so that's almost like a 45 degree angle. Now, you, what you're going to do is you're going to imagine this creek in flood. When the water hits that ledge, it's just going to go straight down and it's going to carry all the heavies with it. Just like your sluice box does on the downside, that's where it's going to catch the gold on the downside. So, those big angled downward slopes on bedrock are one of the things that I look for. Other things I look for in bedrock is, if you have a look down in here, there's a little pocket of gravel. Now that is a tiny little sinkhole. So if I were to put my hand in there, I'm pulling out gravel. I try to determine if it's deep enough to work. Now that one's not very deep. There's a channel actually running parallel to the direction of the creek. Now believe it or not, Parallel cracks in bedrock or channels catch more gold than perpendicular ones. Why? Because the water is forced through them and channel. Now that's not really a good example because it's got no water flowing through it. Now here's one of those channel points that I was talking about. See how the water's forced through this little channel? Now that's not very deep by the looks of it, but some of those little channels can be rather deep and when they're deep, they will catch gold one of my number one things that I look for. Right here we've got a massive floater. There's the bedrock there and there's a big crack there. Now if that's a floater and if I could move that, that would definitely be an area that I would take because that would have some gold trapped under it. Now moving up the creek starting to slowly move around this bend and if you look over to the left here there's a massive ledge of bedrock now if this river was in flood or this creek was in flood that's exactly where the water would be flowing and that's where it would be dropping all the heavies what i look for in stuff like this is big floaters there's a big floater there and there's a lot of gravel in down below it so that could have a fair bit of gold in it Someone's actually had a bit of a dig around this rock for good reason. I would venture to say that there'd be some pretty good gold under this floater. But that's not the one that's got me excited. As I'm moving up this bedrock, this bench here, there's this little crevice here. That should have a fair bit of gold in it, some good colour in it. The one that's got me really excited is this rock here. Now, it actually looks like it's part of the bedrock, but it is not. That is a floater. So that's going to take a crowbar to get that bloke out. When this river is in flood, the water is coming straight down over this bench, and the gold is getting trapped in all the crevices. But when you see a big rock like that jammed into it, that hasn't moved for a long time, that indicates that this section of the bedrock was originally a very good trap. 
So under this rock should be some pretty good gold. Continuing up the creek, nine times out of ten if you're in a straight section of a creek, the gold's going to be concentrated toward the centre. But on a bend like this, the inside of the bend is where the most of the concentration will be. And where you start seeing the bedrock coming up on the inside of the bend, that's a number one place to look. So for instance, you've got this piece of bedrock here, you've got that nice 45 degree slope, so this tiny little pocket here should be a good spot to try. That would be a good sampling area. Now sometimes in a creek you'll get a piece of bedrock that's doing the exact opposite to every other bit of bedrock. Now this is a classic example. If you have a look at this piece of bedrock, this is like a fault line almost running parallel to the creek so down in there is a channel that i was talking about so that could be potentially a gold trap and if you follow this fault line inherently it's got some small cracks in it there's one moving all the way up here all the way up here and there's even a triangular pocket just in there now yes admittedly that's the inside of the bend but if you picture the creek coming around the bend, it's going to smash into here before it bounces back down to there. So that is potentially a good trap. Other things that I'm looking for is where the water slows down after it exits like a little waterfall. That's a good area. And finally, one of the other things I look for in a creek is I look at what's happening with the side gullies. Now, up in this area here is a tributary. Now, that tributary is running off the diggings, and it's all bedrock. So, it would pay for me to just to move up that tributary a bit and take a few test pans, because there could be really good colour, fresh colour, coming into this creek from that little tributary. It's dry, so it'll be easily dry crevice to get some good test samples anyway guys that's just some of the things i'll look for when i'm walking up a creek i hope that helps you out a bit thanks for watching